can't sleep? After everything we just heard? How could I? Fair enough. Xian's had to deal with so much on her own. Even when we were all laughing and celebrating, she just kept quiet and didn't say anything. I thought she was keeping her distance because of her thorns. That it was because she didn't want to hurt anybody by getting too close. I just figured that that was the type of person she was, you know? But it turned out to be none of that. All this time, she felt like she had to die and sacrifice herself for the greater good. But even then, she didn't think she could say anything to us about it. I know. She was so alone this entire time. How could I call her a friend and yet be so completely blind to everything she was going through? I'm sure it made her happy, knowing you were there for her. You really think so? Yeah, I do. If she didn't think of us as friends, I don't think she could have ever opened up to us like that. You were a good friend to her before, and you'll be an even better one now. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to be the best I can for her. When you think about it, we were all alone in our own way. But over time, we've all found ways to let each other into our lives. I hope Xion's able to do that one day too. No, I mean, I hope she's able to do that more. Lots and lots more. I think it'd be really nice if we could all just be there to support each other when it really counts. And forget about our grudges and pain. Rinwell. Did you know? You mean about Xion? Yeah, I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, every once in a while I thought something seemed a little off, but I never could have imagined. It's like a completely different world was spinning around me and I couldn't even see it. You and me both. I mean, I knew something was bothering her, but I could never quite figure out what it was. You? But you're the one always looking out for her, aren't you? That's what I thought. But in reality, I didn't understand it all. What I thought was helping and being there for her was actually just driving her into a corner. At least you figured it out in time though, right? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But yeah, you're right. We brought her back from the edge and we're going to stop those thorns from taking her, no matter what. Yeah, with all of us together, there's nothing we can't handle. Shion, the world, we can save everyone. And I mean it when I say we, Alfin. I know. No lone wolfing it. Hey, you're the expert on what my dad would say. Do you think he'd pat me on the back or tell me off? Zephyr, I don't think that he'd have that much to say, to be honest. You're your own man now, Law. And you've already made up your own mind about what you want. I guess he couldn't say anything even if he wanted to. Law. Sorry. I guess those of us amongst the living have enough problems to deal with, don't we? We'll need all our strength to save Xion. I'll probably end up worrying again at some point. But I guess I'll think it over more then. That okay? Yeah, I think it is. Doing all right? <laughs> I seem to cause nothing but worry. As much as I try to look like I have things under control, everyone still worries about me. You're not the only one. Hey, do you remember the first time you said I was your friend? No? When was that? Sorry, I can't remember. That's okay. It came so naturally to you, I'm not surprised you forgot. I was different back then. The Danans were not even people to me. 
and I knew I would always be alone. But in that room with Deadheim, when you called me your friend, it just shattered the wall that I'd built up around me. Because until that moment, I'd only seen you as a means to an end. I thought of you as a way to use the Blazing Sword and to obtain the Renis Alma. <laughs> but after that day, one time became two. And before I knew it, you'd made a habit of calling me and Dohalim your friends. It didn't matter that we were Renans. You cared about us as you would any other people. Then, everyone else started to call me their friend too. To think of me as their friend. Before then, I never even dreamed I could have that. I didn't want to die and lose you all. But I also didn't want to live if it meant you would all die in my place. Shion. But then, I realized... I'd only really been thinking of myself that entire time. After saying how I felt, and hearing what you all had to say, I finally understood that. <sighs> Don't worry, it's okay. I'm not planning on dying anymore. I've met too many people along the way who I truly care about to give in now. So I'll fight. For Dana and for myself. I'll fight against my fate to preserve our future. And I'll win, come hell or high water. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I won't let the world end because of me. It's going to be a long, hard road ahead, Shion. Our fight won't be over until everyone, both Danans and Renans, can finally live in peace. But I swear I'll be there with you, until the very end. Thank you. Remember what we learned back in Calaglia? There's no wall so high that we can't break it down. Yeah, I think you may be right about that. Everyone well rested? Then let's go. We depart for Lenegas. Well, it's the moment of truth. This lady better hold together once we're up in the air. La, don't say that! You're going to jinx us! Speaking of which, Alfin, this bucket of bolts got a name? A name? Hmm. You know, I'm not sure she ever had one. I never really thought about it. Well, after all the trouble we went through to find her, we should give her one, right? I was thinking something like... Thaw Knights. Huh? It means owl in the ancient tongue. Literally, the one drawn to the skies. I like it. Sounds perfect for our little escapade. Not sure I'm completely convinced, but... Well, it's as good a name as any. From now on, she'll be known as the Fall Knights. Okay, people. We have two goals. First, we need to get to Lenegas and make the Renans finally leave Dana alone. And then, we need to figure out the truth behind Shion's thorns and find a way to save her. Sound good? All right, and let's go.
You know, I can still hardly believe it. Believe what? I mean, just look at it. The whole of existence crammed inside a tiny frame. Now that you mention it, I guess you're right. It does look more like a painting than a living, breathing world. From up here, all the struggles we've been through feel so insignificant. Nothing like realizing how small you are to put everything into perspective. Kind of makes the differences between the Renans and the Danans feel pretty small too, huh? How much longer until we reach Lenigus? There are better ways to use your time than napping. We should take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the facilities on board before arrival. Good idea. The Starship may end up serving as our base of operations once we're down there. Think you'll be all right with the controls? You mean the ones set to automatic pilot? I dare say I'll manage. I'm basically just here to supervise. In that case, she's all yours. Everything okay, Shion? You... We'll be going to Lenigus soon. This must feel like a homecoming of sorts to you, huh? What was life on Lenigus like back then? You know, before you came to Dana. Let's just say... I don't have many happy memories. I've had thorns my whole life. For as long as I can remember. They called it treatment. But in truth, they were just using me as a guinea pig for their research. You mean... They experimented on you? That's right. All I was to them was a riddle to solve. They poked and prodded me, trying to figure out what triggered my thorns or changed the form they took. Day in and day out, every single day, one test after another. I'm still surprised they didn't try to dissect me. The look they gave me whenever one of them touched my skin. How could I forget it? Reeling from the pain, like I was a monster or something. Some existence, huh? A blight on any I touched. Helplessly complicit in their pain. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but then they did. I started to have nightmares, visions of the coming apocalypse. <sighs> Is it any wonder I lacked a cheery disposition? Unable to so much as touch another soul. Loneliness was my best friend. Sure, I survived, but with the knowledge that one day I'd be swallowed up by oblivion. And that's when it hit me. If I was going to die, then it should mean something. If I have to sacrifice myself to save the world, so be it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you relive that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm in a much better place now. You say it's your destiny to die so that others can live. But why not the other way around? Why shouldn't we be the ones dying to save you? Uh, are you crazy? Why would you sacrifice your life for... That's exactly my point. Why should you have to give up your life just because you drew the short straw in the destiny stakes? How is that even right? It's that logic that's used to justify slavery, as if some of us were just meant to be sacrificed. This struggle was never about saving only ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to give up our own lives to save everyone else's either. If we're doing this to protect people, if we're doing this to save the world from destruction, then that has to include saving each other as well. A world free of sacrifice. That's what you've been fighting for all along, isn't it? Not just me. We're in this together, remember? This fight is yours too, Xion. If we're going to win, everyone has to win. There can be no room for losers in this fight. Now I see it. The true nature of our struggle. A victory without losers. But that means that a Danon victory over Rena can't be the end. Do you think we can pull it off? You bet we can pull it off. We have to. It's the only hope we have of things ever changing. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever changed the future without aiming for the stars. We can do this together. Hmm. Is something wrong? No. I was merely thinking how it had been seven years, that's all. You mean since you became a lord and left Lenigus? I guess even someone like you can get homesick, huh? 
I am as prone to sentimentality as any other. Tell me, though, you too have a history with Lenigus. A traumatic one, no less. This trip will probably mean facing up to some difficult emotions. Doesn't that frighten you? Well, it is a place where I took the lives of countless people. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it. But I can't keep running forever. The past is what it is. There's no changing that. But the future's what we make it. I see. Dohalim? Forgive me. I was wrong to pry. We have more pressing matters to address. Come back and speak to me when you finish looking around the ship. and... Hey, shut up! What's got Law all flustered? Only that he's afraid of flying, the big baby. And after all that fuss he made about naming the ship, too. Hey, I never said I was scared. I just think it's, you know, a little unsettling how we're going to be cruising through space in a glorified tin can. That's all. It's a starship, dummy. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's anything strange about it. Well, maybe you're the one with the problem, then. Guys, guys. I'm no expert, but I think we can trust Ren in technology. It got me to Dana in one piece, remember? Oh, that's a good point. If you think so, Alfin, it must be okay. Don't you agree, Law? Hard to argue with that, seeing how you hitched a ride in one of these things before, Alfin. It's just wrong, okay? You okay? Feeling airsick? Actually, now that you mention it, not at all. These starships are a remarkably smooth ride, all things considered. Nothing like being at sea, thank goodness. Glad to hear it. That device there caught your eye, huh? I was just wondering what it is. It looks big enough to fit a person inside of it. It's a healing pot. It fixes injuries and illnesses. Oh, you don't say. Well, that should definitely come in handy if any of us get injured while we're down there. <sighs> Alfin? Was it something I said? No, I... Uh, I was just thinking back to when I escaped Lenigus, that's all. What with the ceremony and losing control, I was a total mess. Nayori laid me inside here. So, you're saying you got in this thing straight after escaping? But that mean... You were inside for 300 years? Yes. It sounds crazy, I know. But don't even ask me why I stayed asleep all that time. That's definitely quite some lion, all right. But still, whether you meant to or not, I sure am glad that it's this century that you finally woke up in. What do you mean? With the amount of fighting we've done, we would have never made it this far without you. And not only that, but... Alfin, can you recall back to what it is that I said to you? Back when we left Menencia? About the dream of coexistence and needing to learn what it entailed? Of course. That's why you came with us, right? To learn what you couldn't at home. Even in that time, I was well aware that what I was living was a lie. But at the same time, I also felt really compelled to fulfill my brother's wishes. I'll always remember him fondly. But the coexistence we're fighting for isn't for him. It's for people now, and those still to come. The world's bigger than just men and Sia. My dream is for all Danans, wherever they might be, to be free. If I've learned anything on this journey, it's that. And the one who brought me along was you, Alfin. I'll forever be grateful to you. Well, we're not out of this forest just yet. You should probably save your thanks. At least, until we've dealt with the Red Woman. I know. But whatever we find when we get down there, I'm through looking the other way. Kisara... Probably getting a little ahead of myself, huh? 
Let's take things one step at a time. Is everyone about ready? We'll soon be making preparations to land. Before we do that, just what exactly should we expect when we get down there? Kisara has a point. Now that I think of it, I don't know the first thing about Lanigus. I'd like to hear more too. It's been centuries since I was last there, and they didn't exactly give me the grand tour. Very well. First and foremost, Lanigus is was the base of operations in charge of the crown contest on Dana. Of course, it also happens to be a city in its own right, complete with its own independent society. Its social structure is based on a strict hierarchy. Put simply, the strength of an individual's astral arts carries great weight. Enough to determine someone's social rank, you mean? But astral arts are innate, right? So people's positions are fixed at birth. They can be honed with the right training, and there are admittedly other factors at play. But yes, that's basically the gist. As a result, family lines that churn out lords and their contenders wield disproportionate influence, and those lineages are treated as nobility. Those capable of only weak astral arts are effectively an underclass, denied the right to descend to Dana even if they wanted to. Still. Even the lowest rung on the Renan ladder is considered superior to being a Danon. Keep that in mind down there. Thanks for the warning. As a lord, Dohalim must have been pretty high up in the pecking order, right? What about you, Xion? Come on, you've seen her skill with astral arts. You really need to ask? <laughs> Fair point. On arts alone, you're right. I'd have been sitting pretty. But you're forgetting my thorns. They weren't exactly an invitation to high society. Ah, sorry. No, it's fine. It's refreshing to be around someone who says what they're thinking. Life's less complicated that way. Jeez, give backhanded compliments much? Wait a second. Are you? He is! Lost blushing! I am not! <laughs> of course, separating people into castes based on something arbitrary like arts is discrimination at its worst. As if such simplistic criteria could ever be a measure of someone's worth. So this red woman, are we expecting to find her on Lenigus? I would wager so. Lenigus is too deeply involved in all this to discard the possibility. Chances are she's also connected to the Renis Alma being stolen from us in Pelegian. If the Renis Alma is being used to exploit Dana, we need to take it back at all costs. That red woman's got a lot to answer for. Just as well I've got a ton of questions. We're about to land. The descent could be a little bumpy, so brace yourselves. If there are clues about your thorns out there, Xion, we'll find them. There's no one here. I wasn't expecting a welcome mat, but still... Lenigus's infrastructure is largely automated. Besides, people won't be expecting incoming traffic while the crown contest is still underway. Do you think anyone realizes that we're here? We may not have received a royal welcome, but I doubt our entrance went unnoticed. Don't let your guard down. I really hope we don't have to fight anybody while we're here. So now what? We've come all this way on a hunch that this red woman is here, right? And if we're lucky, the Renis Alma too. Any idea where we should start looking? There is an area of the city that is accessible only to the Sovereigns, known as the Forbidden Zone. That seems as good a place as any for us to start. 
Forbidden? What are they hiding? I don't know, hence my desire to find out. Fortunately, we just so happen to have a sovereign in our midst. In any case, changing the shape of a huge structure such as Lenigus would have required an immense source of power. Then you think that source might have been the Renis Alma? Precisely. Alfin said that he remembered the Renis Alma being used in the spirit channeling ceremony three centuries ago. Whatever the ceremony's purpose, if preparations are underway for it to be held once more, then the Renis Alma might be in the same place as last time, possibly together with the Red Woman. Hiding something of that worth in the residential quarters would only court trouble. In which case... It stands to reason we should be looking somewhere normally out of bounds. Is that it? Indeed. But it's been over 300 years since I was made a sovereign. You can't seriously think I'll be able to waltz right into the place after all this time. There's only one way to find out. If there's even a chance you can get us in, I say we give it a shot. Xion's right. Who knows? We might even find a clue to her thorns while we're at it. All right. It's not like we're swimming in leads, so let's try to track down the Forbidden Zone. Beyond that wall lies a city full of Renans. The capital city where Xion and Dohalim used to live, no less. What in the world? This being Renan territory, I was prepared for a lot of things to look different. But this? This is a bit more than I anticipated. The very foundations of the city have shifted. What could have caused this? When Lenigus changed shape, it must have had an effect on the interior, too. Maybe when they sent the Wedge down to Dana? But they wouldn't move around the places where people live. These are their homes, right? I would think the citizens themselves didn't have much say in the matter. Either way, locating the Forbidden Zone just became that much trickier. Dohalim? Is that you? Avakir, I'm glad to see you're well. So it is you! But why are you here? Shouldn't you be down on Dana participating in the crown contest? And these people... So you haven't heard what happened on Dana, then? Heard what? Someone you know? An old friend. Hey, Dohalim. Don't tell me you've started keeping company with... They're with me. More importantly, what's happened here? Uh, I'm really not sure. The city's foundations began to shift without warning, and now everything looks like this. We're all waiting for the Sovereign to tell us what's happening, but so far... Avakir, listen to me. We're looking for the Forbidden Zone. Do you have any idea where we might find it? The Forbidden Zone? What business could you possibly have there? Trust me. The less you know, the better. <sighs> You're just the same as ever. <laughs> I wish I could help, but what with the changed topography, I can barely locate my own home let alone the Forbidden Zone. Very well. It looks like we'll have to find the way there ourselves. Have you seen Faria yet? No. I see. Well, nothing much has changed with her. If anything, she's probably even more... 
I can well imagine. Why did you come back? You know it can only result in pain for you both. I've no doubt of that. You really are the same as ever. Fine, I understand. Just don't say I didn't warn you. And take care of yourself. Okay, Doe? So who's Faria? La! <sighs> if what Avakir said is true, it would seem the people of Lenegas are being kept in the dark about what's happening down on Dana. They seem to be just as clueless about what's going on up here in their own world. Despite the fact that it's actually here that the Wedge originally came from. We need more information. Let's talk to the citizens, see what we can find out. While we're at it, we can ask them about the Red Woman too. And don't forget about finding the way to the Forbidden Zone, either. Let's leave the talking to Xion. We can't have a bunch of Danans poking their noses around. Good idea. I think that's for the best. I shall assist. You sure? Being a lord on Lenigus has its advantages. Right. Then we'll leave it to you two. The Danans among us should probably keep our heads down. What if people freak out? I shall explain it away by saying I'm leading you. What are we, dogs? Oh, dear me. What an unspeakable mess this has all become. Whatever did we do to deserve this? You really have no clue what might have caused this? Would that I have. Alas, there was no warning, no prior decree. We have no choice but to grin and bear it. But do my eyes deceive me? Could I really be standing in the presence of his lordship, Dohalim of the House Ilkaris? I believed he was on Dana. Your eyes do not deceive you. It is I, one and the same. As your lordship wishes. First Lanagus mutates beyond recognition, now this unexpected visit. The Sovereign's plans are inscrutable indeed. The Ilkaris House has produced a great many lords over the centuries. I shall be praying for your victory in the latest crown contest. Your good wishes do me an honor. <laughs>